life's a fight. It's all the same. You know, sometimes life throws the kitchen sink at you. The fight that you fight as an entrepreneur isn't physical, but unless you're... One of the other things that hold people back is they're like, no, I don't need coaching. No, I don't need this. No, I don't need that. I'm good where I'm at. And it's only like, are you? And for how long? Yeah, well, definitely a couple of answers are. I think, you know, it's not about never having enough. It's about, it's money's an amazing byproduct that comes with a buzz of success. You know, you know what I also love doing with money? Giving it away, hmm. the charity, the, as a present, as a gift. And see the fool who thinks he knows it all. He's the, he's the idiot that's sitting in the room. Like I, I get mentored every Friday morning at 5.30 a.m. by the same guy for the last 10 years. It's never going to change because I'm never going to know it all. And the, the biggest idiot in the planet is the one who thinks he knows it all. And I had a business partner like that. And he would have argued with a brain surgeon on the, on the procedure. <laughs> and the guy was just an absolute, he was a fucking idiot. So I want to talk of something that you went a little bit out of, out of uh, it's a weird coaching thing that, that you've done. Molly McCann, right? You recently coached her. She had a big win in Vegas. What, so for, first off, what exactly were you coaching her on? What, what were you brought in on? That's a great question. So, you know, what happened with me was I, I used to be heavily involved in MMA. Um, myself and three business partners owned a company called Cage Wars. We were on 300 million TV sets across the US. Um, I became amazing friends with Rich Clemente from UFC. Um, so my connection to MMA was like stacking to none. Um, I've been watching Molly. I've seen that you had a defeat. I know the power that I've got to help somebody with their mind. And I actually reached out to her and said, Molly, my name's Tom Smith. She was coming back from a fight. I put her up in a hotel in Liverpool that I owned as a gift, just to let her say, you know, you know, that's okay, you lost, but please have a couple of nights on me. A person that she was very good friends with was a good friend of mine too, and the connection just came. Definitely everything was in alignment with the universe. She says to me, you know, what do you want of me? And I went, absolutely nothing. Um, I started sponsoring her from a financial point of view because I actually wanted to help her out because I know what it's like as a fighter. You know, it's not all about all these huge wins of money. That's coming now for Molly. I simply wanted to be associated with her. And then I completely fell in love with her. Like she was my daughter. But we are super close, mega close friends. And I'm, I'm lucky enough to call her, call her like my close, one of my closest friends, but I'm also her mindset coach. So what did I do? I started to get the walk in the shoes of the elite athlete that I knew she was. And then the next thing she started to believe and remember the person that she was. She's always been the amazing fighter, but after a loss, sometimes we can all lose ourselves. So the next thing she started walking through the streets of Liverpool and the elite athlete that was going to get a UFC fight and win again. And then it was just completely getting back into the amazing athlete was there. All we needed to do was strengthen the mind again. So the next time she went for that fight, not only was she on point for fitness that nobody could touch, but she had already won the fight in her head. And just coming up to Vegas, just in Vegas, I was phoned her on a Wednesday night. She says, what are you doing? She says, I'm about to get into the shower. And I said, put it on speaker. And I said, I want you to do the TV interview now in that shower, explaining exactly how you've won that fight on Saturday night. And she done the TV interview and explained how she won that fight. Because in her head, all she was going to do was turn up. And did she win? She won fight of the night. She won fight of the month. And she was the most incredible elite athlete I've seen in a long time. I love her with all my heart. And I'm so proud to call her my friend. And I'm so proud to be her coach. What similarities do you, I, do you see in coaching, like, a, a, I guess, an MMA fighter and an entrepreneur? Life's a fight. It's all the same. You know, sometimes life throws the kitchen sink at you. The fight that you fight as an entrepreneur isn't physical. But unless you're willing to get up when you get knocked down, you're going to end up getting defeated. You know, I was, tell, I, was doing, I was doing a talk last night and I was telling people, sometimes I go through six months of heaven and then I wake up under my quilt, lamb beside my beautiful wife, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so scared. Dread kicks in, anxiety. But when you know and you've been mentored and you've taught yourself, 
you know to yourself, positivity and happiness and dread and negativity live in two different frequencies. So what do I do? I write my goals, my gratitude, my mantra. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes I'll do high level cardio. Sometimes it doesn't work. And like I told the crowd last night, sometimes I'll play the pussycat dolls and the next thing, boom. <laughs> I don't, and you're like, there's that tune. It's about finding the vibration because having a bad day and living in an anxiety world is a choice. And I don't choose to live in that world. And I'm lucky that I know I've got a universal toolbox and I just need to find, find the right one to get me on that wavelength where I win. So sometimes when I walk into the office at eight o'clock, the staff don't know I've maybe had a three hour battle before I even turned up for work. But I'm lucky to have the tools to beat it. I, I guess well, I, I'm curious if, if you agree with this. I, listening to you talk, I think one of the similarities also versus, you know, coaching a basketball player or, or something like that is that being an entrepreneur is a lonely journey at times, right? Exactly. It's not, it's not a team sport. It's on you. It's on your yeah. shoulders. Um, no matter how amazing of a, of a partner you have, how amazing of a wife, or uh, if you're a female listener or, how, or whatever, no matter how, how much you have a support system in place, no one really lives inside your brain and understands how low those lows could be. And when you go to work, it's on you. The noise has to shut off. I imagine it's the same thing for a UFC fighter, right? In their mind, they're trained, they're training. No one knows what they're going through. No one, no one can take the punch in the face for them and be like, okay, I'm going to grab this punch for you. And, and then how to react to that when you're in the ring alone and all the noises have to get turned out. It, it's a very lonely journey for them too. And see those early morning sprints when nobody's watching you and, you're, and you've got that big fat word in your head, head accountability. You have to be that person to turn up. But it's also the same as the entrepreneur. Molly puts that work in when nobody's watching. And when she goes into that ring, she knows she's give a billion percent. And that's why she wins. But it's the same for me and you as an entrepreneur. If we're not being accountable with ourselves, because if anything goes wrong in our companies, the only person who's felt it is, is ours. Because we haven't been accountable enough. You know, people say, you know, I've got a problem with that guy micromanaging me. Well, you're not obviously not doing your job if you've got a problem with each other. You know, Grant Cardone agrees, you know, but I'm just all in all the time. I'm accountable all the time. I like making the right decisions, but it's also because I've made 50,000 mistakes that I'm, I'm at a position right now to make the right ones. You know, I made a really bad mistake in Dubai and lost 200,000 pounds. Or did I have the best due diligence training course of my life? Because I'll never make a mistake ever again in my life. So, I mean, so you're, you're talking about mistakes and now you coach a lot, right? You, you, do, you do a lot of coaching. What is some of the most common mistakes or, or are there even the same mistakes that you find most people make? I think a big mistake people can make is choose, choosing the wrong mentor and picking somebody who's never opened and closed a business in their life and somebody who's read something out of a book and doesn't have any scars to be able to coach you. You know, taking opinions of fools is definitely a massive mistake. Not doing your due diligence. The big thing for me that was one of my mistakes, I got so excited on my brand new life that I was going to have in Dubai, I took my eye completely off the ball. So... If you're going to do due diligence, do it three or four times, rip it apart, put it back together again, check it again. And when you know you're right, you're right. 